Uh, my grievances with the school board is as follows. Um, a few years back, there was a school bus crash, a uh, single uh, vehicle crash where the school bus ran off the road and went into some pine trees off of Interstate 95. Um, some children were severely injured, including one kid that nearly lost his legs. Uh, I started investigating that. I found out that the school bus driver did not fill out his safety pre-trip inspection form that morning uh, through a public record request. And uh, so I started investigating to see if the uh, school bus drivers were doing their pre-trip inspections, safety pre-trip inspections that they're required to do before they drive the bus. So I was filming them coming in, not doing the uh, safety pre-trip inspections. But then I did public records requests for those pre-trip inspection forms and they were falsifying those records. And the school retaliated against me for conducting that investigation by trespassing me from every single school in St. John's County and trespassing me from the uh, school zones of every school in St. John's County. I cannot come within 500 feet of a school because of my investigations into school bus safety. Uh, this was uh, 2015 or so. So uh, I'm, I'm trespassed pretty much for the rest of my life from school, from, I can't come within 500 feet of any school, and I can't go onto any school property. So, what about this property? Uh, well, they made an exception if, uh, uh, if there's a public meeting going on. I'm allowed to attend and record the public meeting because they knew they couldn't uh, bar me from doing, doing that. So, every chance I get on my days off, I'll come out uh, when there's a public meeting and I'll, uh, I'll hold the sign. Uh, I've been out here quite a few times already. I mean, put yourself in my shoes. If you if you were not allowed to come within 500 feet of any school in this county, could you actually live in this county and drive in this county and go about your normal everyday business in this county? All because I was investigating the school buses and pulling safety records. That's why I have this sign. Uh, they didn't like me uh, uh, filming their bus drivers. And they, you know, here's the thing: when I was filming the bus drivers, it was in the morning when there was no children on the bus. It was when the bus drivers were first getting there, but. They put it out in the newspaper that I was filming children on the bus, you know, slander me on the paper, uh, uh, try to make it look like, you know, Jeff Gray was, was seen within the, the school safety zones of schools within, you know, a week within the San Bernardino shooting that happened in California. And I'm like, you know, that, that's that's across the other side of the country. And all I'm doing is filming your bus drivers, you know, not, not doing safety pre-trip inspections and falsifying the documents saying that they did. It, it was. It was the accident uh, where Caden Hicks is the child's name. Caden Hicks was severely injured. And um, uh, the only reason he didn't lose his legs is because uh, they had to do a whole lot of uh, um, operations on his legs to save his legs. And, uh, and then, like I said, when I found out that the... Uh, bus ha accident happened. I just I just did a public record request for the um, school safety or the pre -trip, school bus pre-trip safety inspection form and the bus driver didn't fill it out that morning. Now he claims that um, he always filled it out at the end of the day. You know, he does his inspections but he doesn't, he fills it out at the end of the day. And the school board seemed to think like, oh well that's a plausible good enough explanation, no big deal. So that's why I started, I was like, well no, that's not a good deal because Myself, I'm a truck driver, and I know that if I do a pre-trip inspection, which I'm required to do before I put that truck on the road, um, you have to fill the form out too, because you get pulled over and you try to tell a, a, a Department of Transportation officer, oh, hey, look, you know, I I, filled, I did the inspection, I just do the form at the end of the day. No, that doesn't fly. You'll get, you know, you'll get a ticket for it. You might even get deadline and put on, you know, put out a service for doing something like that. And the school board acted like it was just, oh, that's a, that's a good enough excuse. He, he just does his inspections and then he fills the form out later on. So that's what prompted me to go out early in the morning and start filming the bus drivers when they come to work to see if they're actually doing it. And uh, it was uh, the majority of them that I filmed did not perform the safety pre-trip inspections. There was a few that did, but most of them were coming in, hopping out of their cars, hopping on the bus, and down the road they went to pick up the kids. I was arrested. Um, in front of St. Augustine High School uh, for protesting, and uh, they, they dropped the charges on that. Uh, but I was just holding a sign that said, um, uh, um, what did it say? It said, all the signs said was, uh, public records access is not a crime and the First Amendment is not a crime. And the St. John's County Sheriff's Department came out and arrested me for that. So, but they, they, they quickly dropped the charges. State Attorney's Office saw the video, dropped the charges, I mean, immediately. and. Uh, it didn't stop me. I'm, I'm still coming out. I'm still going to come out here. Uh, so this really, this single issue has changed your life. It's probably turned your life all around. It has. It has. Um, I have to violate the trespass order just to be able to live in this county. I have to, like uh, uh, 
just driving to Publix from where I live to get some uh, groceries or just doing your normal everyday living where in the, in the county that you live in, I have to drive through school zones, school safety zones. I do it every day. I violate the uh, trespass uh, order every day and I'm always constantly concerned that I'm going to get arrested for doing it. I have, uh, at the time that this happened, I had three children in school in St. John's County. Um, two of them have graduated now, and now I have just one child in school. Uh, they did make a, a caveat in the uh, trespass warning that I could pick up and drop off my children at the schools that they, they go to, and I could also come to public meetings. So, it's pretty bad, man. all because I, and that was, that was another thing, I got trespassed from the school that my children went to because I was making a public record request for the fire inspection, or the fire safety records to make sure the fire equipment in the school worked correctly. Uh, they call the cops on me, they trespass me. It's, these, these guys are tyrants, man. They're, these The school board in here are tyrants. And Frank Upchurch, their attorney, is the worst one out of all of them. He is uh, he's a dirtbag. Okay. There's one new guy on, on the school board council, uh, I can't think of his name, a uh, black gentleman. He's actually in my district. I voted for him. He's in there now. He wasn't a part of it, so I I, this is not directed at him, and none of what I said is directed at him. I'm hoping that some new faces and some new blood in the school board will change things around here. Uh, there's there's a lot of people that aren't happy with uh, the school board. Uh, they've been in there, most of them have been in there way too long, uh, and, and they, they're just not, they don't listen to the parents and the people like I think they should. I think they need new blood in there. I think they need a whole total new faces in there. Um, some younger people in there that can start over and, and, and listen to people and not be such tyrants, drunk on their power. Uh, another thing that I, I have a YouTube channel is called On Your Oath Civil Rights Investigations. And um, what I do is I conduct civil rights investigations. That's what I call them. A lot of people call them First Amendment audits, but I call them civil rights investigations. And my, and my latest thing that I'm doing is I'm going in front of uh, different city halls uh, in the state of Georgia and Florida. Um, to hold a sign that says God bless the homeless veterans, to advocate compassion and goodwill to our, our homeless veterans, and also to conduct a civil rights investigation to see if these different municipalities and law enforcement agencies and government agencies respect our right to uh, to peacefully assemble, peacefully uh, engage in free speech and freedom of religion, because that's what I'm doing. Freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and uh, freedom of assembly on the traditional public forum. And so far I've been arrested uh, well, actually, three times I've been arrested. I've been uh, criminally cited one time um, uh, for a violation of uh, unlawful assembly and parade. <laughs> so it's been quite, quite an adventure to see. Uh, and it's my opinion, if you can't stand in front of City Hall, which is the courts have ruled, it's a traditional public forum. It doesn't get any more traditional than that. On the public sidewalk and hold a sign that says, God bless the homeless veterans, then you're not a free, we're not free in this country. You just simply are not free. And um, it's really an outrage that I've been arrested four times, or three times so far. I was arrested in Port Wentworth, Georgia. I was arrested in um, Jacksonville. I've been arrested here in St. John's County by the St. John's County Sheriff's Department. Over there, you try over there. And uh, the city of Blackshear is the one that gave me the ridiculous uh, criminal citation of uh, being an unlawful assembly, uh, unlawful assembly, unlawful parade on, on city property. <laughs> At last time I checked, if there's assembly, it's kind of hard to assemble something if there's only one part. <laughs> and I'm certainly not a not a parade. So, with the citations, uh, the ones in, in, in Florida were dropped. Uh, as a matter of fact, St. John's County and Jackson JSO didn't even take me to jail. Uh, what it is is they think I'm homeless. They automatically assume that I'm homeless. And then once they run my ID, they find out who I am. I'm not homeless. They let me go. And that's another thing about my civil rights investigation is, is a homeless person would have just as much right to do what I'm doing as anybody else would. Um, so I, I think that's disgusting that they would arrest somebody just because they're homeless, because they feel like they can't do anything about it. Uh, but the, the charges in Port Wentworth, which was the charge of obstruction, uh, and the charge in the criminal citation in Blackshear are still pending against me. I'm right now I'm facing a year and a half, two years in jail and thousands of dollars in fines for standing on public property, a traditional public forum, engaging in freedom of speech, freedom of religion. In America, in this country. Uh, you can see the videos are on Honor Your Oath uh, YouTube channel. Uh, Honor Your Oath Civil Rights Investigations, my YouTube channel. Uh, they're outrageous. But the good thing about it is the last one that I did, I, um, Civil Rights Investigation I did with the God Bless the Homeless sign was in Douglas, Georgia. 
and uh, city of Douglas police officer showed up, came out, we had a nice conversation. He appreciated what I did uh, and said, uh, so you're right, you have every right to do it. Uh, good luck to you and God bless. And I said, God bless him. He drove off and that's the way it should be. That's the way it should be everywhere. Absolutely not. I didn't start paying attention until about 10 years ago. Uh, and the thing that got me started doing this was uh, I'm a truck driver and uh, driving through the small towns like Lottie. Are you familiar with Lottie and Waldo and Hampton? And seeing the speed traps that they had there, it seemed to me that the cops were not out there for public safety. They were out there more to raise revenue. So what I wanted to do, since YouTube was just starting out about 10 years ago, I wanted to get a camera, film this uh, speed trap in these towns, put it on YouTube so people would see. I thought it would serve a dual purpose of promoting public safety because people could see what the speed limits are, they could see where the cops hide, um, and it would also prevent the cops from taking people's money all the time. So. And the very first time I went to Lottie, I actually had an old uh, VHS camera. <laughs> I'm out there with a cassette camera. Uh, first time I pointed a camera at the cops, I get surrounded, my camera gets snatched from me, I get threatened with arrest, um, and that just, that started it right there. That's, that kicked it off. I was like, no, this is not the way it works. We have freedom, we have rights, we can film our public officials. We have a right to know what's being done on our behalf and at our expense, and uh, they don't think we do, a lot of them. <laughs> I think I've been arrested 12 times overall since I started. I think it's I think 11 or 12 times I've been arrested, and not a single time that I break the law. Not a single time. Uh, every single time the charges were dropped before I went to trial, except for these two up in Georgia that are currently pending. So.